Angles and polygons. Your goal is to understand some of the basics of polygons and their angles uh, before we get into the next few lessons in the next couple of days. All right, so let's take a look. So in this chapter, we're going to be dealing a lot with polygons. These examples below are all considered polygons. Basically, it's poly is a way to say many, and gons is sides. So it's many-sided shapes, meaning two-dimensional shapes. So what we also need to understand is what is not considered a polygon. So these three examples are not polygons. Um, this one is not considered a polygon because the sides aren't straight. It's a curved oval, so it's not a polygon. Same thing with this one. Even though these two sides are straight sides, this curved side makes it not a polygon. This one, even though it has all straight sides, it's not a polygon because the sides don't meet at the vertices. There's a spot here where these two sides meet in the middle. And so we get this definition of a polygon. A polygon is a closed plane figure made up of three or more line segments that intersect only at their endpoints. Now, a couple other things here. Closed meaning, of course, it's got to be completed. So here's a, a plane figure, but it hasn't been completed into a polygon, so this would not count. And then a plane figure, what they mean by that is not as an airplane, but as in two-dimensional. That a plane means a two-dimensional surface, so anything that's a flat shape. So in other words, polygon deals only with two-dimensional flat figures. All right, something else you'll need to know going in. There's a difference between just a polygon and something called a regular polygon. Now what the regular part means is that whatever polygon you're looking at, all the sides are congruent and all the interior angles are congruent. So for example, let's take a pentagon. This is considered a pentagon. Penta means five, gon means side, so a five-sided shape. One, two, three, four, five, even though they don't form what we would typically think of as a pentagon. Now a regular pentagon looks like this, and it's a regular pentagon because it meets these criteria. All the sides are congruent, and these interior angles are also all congruent. So that's what makes it a regular shape as opposed to just a plain old pentagon. All right, a couple other things. All right, so something else we'll see a bit in this chapter, convex and concave polygons. And the key word I like to focus in on here is cave because it gives me a visual of what it actually means. So I'm actually going to do this one first. Concave is this polygon. A concave polygon has at least one spot where the, the side has been caved in. It, it's going inwards, okay, as to, opposed to convex. Convex, all the angles bow outwards, so there's no spot that's been pushed inwards towards the center of the shape. So this is convex, and this is an example of concave, specifically this spot right here. All right, let's keep going. Now, one thing we're going to be talking a lot about is interior angles. And all we really mean by that is we're looking at the angles on the inside of the polygon. So, for example, this is an interior angle right here, one here, here. Now, even though this goes the other direction, this is considered the interior angle, this angle here, and this angle here. So these would be considered the interior angles, all the angles on the inside at the vertices. Now, exterior angles is a little bit more complicated, so really pay attention to this one. Now, just like you'd expect, it's the angles on the outside of the polygon, but it's specifically the angles um, that are alongside the shape. So, for example, here we've got this triangle. So there's this exterior angle that's on the side of the triangle, and there's a duplicate one over here. Notice how I didn't mark this one though. This is not considered an exterior angle. This one is, and this one because they're next to the shape itself, but this one's kind of opposite the shape, so it's not considered an exterior angle. Same thing over here. This one is touching this side of the triangle. This one over here is touching this side of the triangle. This one is not considered an exterior angle, but these two are. And then over here, these two are also exterior angles. And notice how they come in pairs, that since these are vertical angles, these two are congruent, these two are congruent, and these two are congruent. Because that becomes important because when we're looking at exterior angles, we don't look at all six of these. In fact, it would look more something like this. Let's say I was looking at the exterior angle of this quadrilateral right here. Well, what I would do is I would think of my lines of the, the sides of the quadrilateral all extending 
out a bit further. So imagine this line was just stopped here and I extended it out this way. And then I kept going clockwise and taking the other shapes and also extending those clockwise outwards. Okay, and so what I would look at for my exterior angles would be this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, quadrilateral. Four vertices, four exterior angles. Okay, so we don't we don't do it like this one, where we had three vertices and six exterior angles. The the number of exterior angles should match the number of vertices. Now it doesn't matter which way you go here. My example went clockwise, but notice I've taken the same example. I've just I flipped it counterclockwise, or extended the line out in a counterclockwise pattern. Same thing though. That extended line and then the shape. There's one exterior angle, a second one, a third one, and a fourth one. So that's what we mean by exterior angles. All right, so that's a little bit about angles and polygons. These are just some, it's mainly just vocabulary that you're going to need to start into this, uh, this chapter. So make sure you just understand the vocabulary. Go back to any of the slides if you need to, or reverse rewind the video. Um, but have this understanding coming into class the next day.